Welcome to Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection. She has been inspiring her audiences to fire up their brains and ignite positive changes in their relationships. And now she is here to bring that knowledge to you. The information she shares will help those who hear it to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. When you learn to tap into the potential of your natural gifts and the power of the brain-mind connection, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. Today and every Wednesday on Brain Lady Speaks, you'll explore the latest findings to see how they have practical application in your life. And now, get ready to join Julie Anderson on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. Take it away, Julie. I am your host, Julie. Brain Lady Anderson, and I'm very excited to be here today to share uh, some amazing conversation and and amazing conversation with our guest from uh, all the way, coming all the way in from Spain, Miss Sarah Dawkins. How are you today? Hi, Julie. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am doing so well, and I am so excited about this topic. I always get so jazzed up when we're able to share things that help us to live better lives, especially when we connect in the brain and the body's healing mechanisms and all of that. It's always such a great conversation to have. And we are very excited to have you here as a guest. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to read a little bit of Sarah's bio so that everyone kind of gets a little bit of background. And then I'll have you kind of tell a little bit of your story to let us know the other side of the coin, so to speak. So we are here with Sarah Dawkins, who has a bachelor's in science, a master's in science, and AMC, you'll have to explain what that is, of Sarah's SD Health, EssentialHealth.com. Sarah is a holistic health and healing coach, keynote speaker, the author of Heal Yourself, a multi-award winning entrepreneur. And previously, she was a registered nurse for 20 years. We're going to talk a little bit about that journey. She has extensive experience in health and wellness gained from naturally healing a multitude of health issues at her work and her work as a registered nurse. She uses this knowledge to take the holistic approach in her and holistic approach in her work. Sarah supports clients to find and heal the root cause of their health problems, thereby improving their health and of course, ultimately their lives. Isn't that the truth? Welcome again, Sarah, to the Brain Lady Speaks podcast. Thank you so much. So can I just elaborate then? AMC is accredited master coach. So I did a a master coach training course for my coaching and it was accredited. Awesome. Amazing. That's great. That's great to hear. And that's great for our listeners to know. So you were a registered nurse for 20 years. How did that... um, Tell us a little bit about your journey, right? What led you to here? Because obviously you weren't nursing, but you made this this shift. So what made you interested in the nursing profession? And then why did you, what had you after 20 years in that make the shift to what you're doing now? So I was raised in a medical model. Uh, My mom was a nurse and my dad was a fireman. So I was raised thinking that when you're sick, you go to a doctor, you get a prescription, you get some medicines and you are healed in inverted commas. Um, And that's what I believed for most of my life. Um, And in 2005, while I was working in America, we were living in Florida for two years, um, somebody just dropped some little nuggets and seeds um, about something. So I'm like, well, why would she say that? Um, Because I'm totally bought into the medical model and this is how it is and this is how we all live, don't we? Uh, so I started doing some research and one door opened 50 doors, opened 50,000 doors. And it was just like, wow. Um, so I started looking at what I could do to support my body. Meanwhile, I was still working as a registered nurse in the US. And then I went back to the UK. Um, but all the time I was doing all this research, I was starting to look at what I could do. So I started changing my diet, eating better, doing more exercise, becoming mindful, Um, And I started healing. Um, I had eczema. I had psoriasis at different times. I had acid reflux. I had a candida infection. I ended up with two frozen shoulders, one one year, the other one the next year. Um, 
and hip knee back pains and then I ended up with a suicidal depression I burned out my adrenal glands and had an underactive thyroid so after naturally self-healing all of that I thought I really cannot stay in the role that I'm in as a registered nurse because my beliefs around pharmaceuticals and healing and what our body can do no longer align uh, but it took me two years because even though i was no longer aligned with being a registered nurse all of my life because my mum was a registered nurse i'd wanted to be a nurse to help people to care for people to help them to get better um and I've, i'm took me two years to think well if i'm not sarah the registered nurse who am i and i i'd fixed who i was my personality um, to being a registered nurse. So after two years of soul searching, I decided that was enough. I could no longer work within that environment because it didn't, it, it has a place for emergency and trauma, but for everything else we can do ourselves. So I did my um, coaching training and, um, and I've worked as a, a holistic health coach, helping other people to understand how they too can naturally self-heal or the different facets of it because our body heals it's, it's what it does you know when we cut ourselves when we bruise ourselves we don't think oh well how am i going to heal that we're just like well it'll heal so why not multiple sclerosis and als and allergies and autoimmune and everything else yeah that's beautiful you know it's interesting because going all the way back to my teen years, that's when I was just became fascinated with natural health. And then uh, fast forward to my late 20s, I was actually homeschooling my kids. And I was like, I want to go back to school, too. So I started uh, to get my degree in natural health because it is it's just fascinating. It's like the body is so beautifully mm -hmm. and I believe created. Right. That's mm -hmm. my my personal belief that it can do that it if you give the body the right tools yeah. and you don't fight against it it's amazing absolutely amazing what the body what the body can do and yeah. it's interesting that you had that internal kind of argument with yourself for two yeah. years like this is this is the path i'm supposed to be on over here but i'm being drawn into this so i, I think that's a good lesson for a lot of the listeners to hear that it's not like you have this brainstorm of an idea of where you want to go and that happens overnight, right? Sometimes it's this, this growth journey mentally yeah, to get yeah. there, to get there. Yeah. And I so think, as well, sorry, as well, um, the universe, my belief is the universe has a way of just nudging you and making you really uncomfortable if you're not quite on the right path. And I've got to the place where I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I didn't feel fulfilled in my work. I was, yeah, I was helping people. But there was guidelines that I had to follow within the nursing, within the medical model. And it just, I was really struggling with helping people. But through the medical model, I wanted to help them in, you know, to help them to support their own body. And it was just so misaligned. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I became so unfulfilled in my work because I wasn't mm. helping them in a way that I thought would actually benefit them. And, and that's why I left the nursing, because actually we don't need the pharmaceuticals outside of a, an accident and a trauma. We can do everything ourselves, supporting our body. Yeah, it's so interesting because I agree one whole, but you know, wholeheartedly that in acute situations, you know, you break your ankle, you... Yeah. You get poison. Oak. Well, even poison oak can be. There's a lot of natural remedies for that. But there's there's those certain things that are you know antibiotics for specific infections that yeah. you need to get taken care of immediately, or they can become serious. There are those moments that you that you know Western. I call it Western medicine, but traditional medicine yeah. model is is necessary. But most long term chronic illnesses you have a much it, it's a much better idea to if you can go at it from that holistic or from that natural healing and let your body do the work be or else you're working against your body and you it just it makes the chronic situation even more chronic 
Yeah, and it's, and have you noticed as well that we're so used to or programmed to um, not do anything until we've got a problem? So then we become reactive oh, to yeah. the symptoms rather than taking a proactive approach and looking after ourselves before we get the symptoms. Yeah, so true. So true. It's yeah. Yep. And if we give ourselves if we're healthy, and we have a strong, healthy immune system, which means we're giving the body those building blocks to keep that immune system up to its highest level. You don't get sick. I do not get I very rarely get sick. Now I have been in a, a few car accidents that I have neck injury issues, scar tissueing from that. But outside of that, I go a ton <laughs> like the energizer bunny right and the only reason why i'm able to do that i know is because of living a high wellness level lifestyle where mm -hmm. i'm getting exercise and i'm getting the nutrition and i'm drinking my green drink and i'm doing the things for my brain that you know keeps my brain healthy all of that helps to deal with that well this is an interview for you i i'm talking too much okay so <laughs> you kind of mentioned some of you dropped some of those things that health issues that you had dealt with. Now, how did you do that self healing? So how, what were some of the, the, the lifestyle changes, the things that you did to help to heal those conditions that you were struggling with changes in your life? So it, it all starts with baby steps, because you can't do everything all at once. Um, and as I said, when one one side a colleague that I was working with had, had just given me planted some seeds about the body and its natural healing outside of pharmaceuticals, um, I started looking at what I could do to support my body to stay well and not get sick. And first and foremost uh, was actually to change the way I ate because you know I, I had a reasonably healthy diet, but I also ate a lot of crap as well. So I stopped <laughs> eating the rubbish um, and I also stopped eating uh, gluten and dairy because they are known to cause inflammation and inflammation is the root cause of all pain, all dis-ease, all, all health problems. So by cutting those out instantly, actually, the acid reflux that I had went away and the eczema and the psoriasis reduced just by doing that. Obviously, I had to address the stress as well because, of, um, but again, the stress was my own making because it's my own perception of what was going on around me. So when we change the way we look at things, the way that we look at things change. <laughs> exactly, perspective is huge. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. So now, when you talk about, it's interesting. So I have to ask you this, just because. You are in a different country, and here in the United States, gluten and GMO foods are a big culprit of a lot of a lot of issues, and a lot of that has to do with the way our food is prepared and the preservatives in it, and the the you know fast food mentality that we have here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now you're in Spain, so are you still gluten free? Do you find that that is still healthy for you there, even though they don't? tend to have the same gluten issues that we do in the US? Yeah, I'm still gluten free. Um, and I went through a phase of eating gluten free bread. Um, but then you know, when I, I, it, the ingredients started to change and become not very nice. So I cut out gluten free bread and I found a recipe using uh, chickpea flour. And um, I think it's cassava root flour when mixed together two to one, two chickpea to one cassava, um, it makes a batter. And with that batter, I can make um, pancakes and tortillas. So rather than use bread, I, we eat a lot of wraps. And of course, chickpeas, as well as having the fiber, it's got some protein in it too. So, Very so it's, you know, you, you can, if you're willing to, to look for recipes and make it all yourself, um that you can do anything uh, the spanish yeah. eat a lot of bread an awful lot of bread but their bread is very different from the u.s it's not exactly. sweet yeah um 
But I have found just recently, I've, I've bought a few gluten-free rolls. Um, I haven't had any for years. And then I saw them in the shop. And I'm like, well, I'll give them a try because I looked at the ingredients and they were okay. Um, so as a, as a standby, I've got those. But, um, but no, it, it's not difficult to stay gluten-free because I don't eat a lot of sweets. If I want sweets, I'll have um, a medjool date or um, I use maple syrup or honey for sweeteners because they're both alkalizing. Um, and being dairy free isn't a problem. There's all sorts of different types of nut milks and oat milks. Um, and I buy shredded coconut and make my own coconut milk as well. So I can organic coconut milk, which is just coconut and, and filtered water. You know, yeah. it's, if you're willing to spend the time, you can eat clean. But yeah. you need to be willing to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know, so much of that. So as the brain lady over the years, one of the things that that is is so fascinating to me is that, you know, this is the executive portion of our entire body. Yeah. And so it's our thought process. It's our mindset around certain things that has the ability to completely change things in our lives. And we are raised with certain you know, with a certain thing, like 50 years ago, you didn't, or I should say more like a hundred years ago, right? There weren't such things as packaged food. Like there, there are now, no. right? there was no such thing as a TV dinner a hundred years ago. Whereas 50 years ago, it was fairly popular, right? Because it became this ease of things. So then all of a sudden the mentality, the mindset begins to shift from, Oh, I have to allow this much time to prepare my food to Oh, now I can just pop it in the oven for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever it was when I was growing up to now, oh, I can just pop it in the microwave and yeah. it'll take 30 seconds, right? So it's, it's just, it's a mindset shift. So when you train your brain to look at a situation differently, yeah. right, then, then everything begins to shift. And it's just a matter of shifting, shifting your mindset. And you can do the food prep ahead of time so that you can still mm -hmm. do things fast, right? <laughs> During the week when you're busy. Yeah. Yeah. But it 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 just takes that shift, that shift in the in the mind. Do you find that's probably one of the most challenging things when you work with your clients? Yes. Um, because they're like I was, that they're set in a, a conditioned mindset that, you know, if this, then that must happen. And I'll say, well, you can change your belief because it's not set in stone. Yes. And, the, and, and the look of shock and horror because 99.9% .9 of people don't even realize what their beliefs are, the origins of them, and that they can change them. I yeah. mean, I had somebody recently ask me, how do you change a belief? Well, you just, I, you know, you you decide one day that that belief doesn't work for you and what do you want to believe instead and you just change your mind it's like changing your mind do you want soup for dinner no i want fruit yeah both are healthy you know you could it's a it's just a mindset change and and like we said you know you you it's about looking at does it serve you but in the main it's about becoming conscious of it because most people are not aware of their own beliefs. And if you ask them to write it down, they can't because they, uh -huh. they're running on the autopilot unconscious yeah. of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree 100, 100%. I have a um, ACT formula, ACT formula that I use when I'm working with my clients. And that's what the A is. It's the awareness and acknowledgement, right? It's it's being aware of those automated programmings that you run from the moment you get up in the morning to the moment you go to bed at night. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't mean they can't change. It's just your comfort zone. Yes. So you just have to start to shift, shift that a little bit. And then that can make a world of difference. So Absolutely. when you talk about your, now your book is heal your, right. Heal yourself. Is that the name of your book? Yes. Forgive me. Heal yourself. And you have a, your book is Heal Yourself and you have a course that's Heal Yourself at Home. So yeah. what does what does natural healing mean? What does that what does that mean? Heal yourself. Like is that explain that to the audience because that could be interpreted a few different ways. Yeah. For me, it's about 
challenging your beliefs about your own body's ability to heal um, and tapping into what I call your inner wisdom. Our body knows what to do and how to do it, but we often suppress that through our diet, our lifestyle and our beliefs that pharmaceuticals are the answer to the problems. So it's about understanding how our body works on the base at a very, very basic level. Um, mm. And the fact that the mind and the body are inextricably linked and the science, as you know, has proven that for years and years and years. And on top of that, the placebo effect works with that to show that we can manifest wellness. We can heal our body purely by thinking that we can heal but I tell my clients, it's not, you can't just think I'm going to heal and I'm going to heal. You have to challenge your beliefs that are sat in that subconscious mind. Because, you know, you could say I'm going to heal. But if subconsciously you're still running that program that I need a doctor and I need a pharmaceutical, that conscious I'm going to heal is going to be outweighed by that subconscious. Mm -hmm. Potentially, you know, that belief doesn't say that. That belief won't allow that. You need to go to a doctor. So it's about challenging the beliefs um, primarily, but also changing your lifestyle as in be proactive, do some a bit of walking, stay hydrated, get a good night's sleep, eat well, um, but change your thoughts around things because I have people who come to me who want to lose weight and they're like, well, I don't eat anything that I shouldn't. So A, let's look at portion sizes. B, let's look at your thoughts around what it is that you're eating and see if we go to a metaphysical level, why is it that you need to put fat on around your body for protection? What is it that you're trying to protect yourself from? So it's it's all to do. It's it's not just one thing. It's our thoughts, our beliefs. Um what we're eating, drinking, and everything else, but it's also what's happened to us in the past. Our emotional traumas play a huge part in our life. Ooh, yes. um, and a lot of people don't link their past. And I've had clients say to me, my childhood was great. It was perfect. I could do whatever I want. I would stay out all night. So I'm thinking, okay, so parents had no boundaries. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they've come back the following week, they've said, actually, my, my childhood really wasn't that good because I yeah. had to do this and I had to do that. And, and one day my parents dropped me off at the children's home. And um, so when I start to get people to look back at, without the rose tinted glasses, mm -hmm. and then we need to address the, the emotional trauma that's happened um, because true healing requires us to either to let go of whatever's gone on in the past forgiveness is a great part of healing but not everybody can bring themselves to forgive so mm -hmm. acceptance is the next best thing we can accept what's happened in the past it wasn't our fault we didn't like it we didn't have the skills and knowledge to deal with it but if we can accept it to let it go so that it doesn't affect our, our world now our present world now um, and a lot of people really struggle with that. Um, and I've got the meditation that I do do with some clients to get them to go into their subconscious mind to find that hurt and have a conversation with the people involved because our subconscious mind knows what was going on in that person's life. And as another saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. So unless we become conscious of our hurt, but also acknowledge that the person that hurt us quite possibly more than likely was hurting their childhood. And we know nothing about that. Yeah. If we can forgive ourselves, but also forgive them for what they've done, because we don't know what's happened to them okay. or even acknowledge that they are very likely to have been hurt through their childhood to have done whatever it was that they did to us. Yeah. Um, and feel that on a deep level and feel it with compassion, not just for ourselves, but for that other person to be able to forgive them, to let it go. And that plays such a huge part in the healing role for our body because our, our traumas are, are what's it? It's the issues in the tissues, isn't it? 
Mm -hmm. our, our, our body holds on to the memories of what's happened in the past. So if we can let that go, then our body no longer holds on to that. And it's doing that. It's not ever for that other person because they've quite likely forgotten. They don't they even don't remember us. They don't remember the act. So that is really the gift that we give ourselves because it allows us to offload that weight that we've carried around with us all of our lives. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes courage to open that can of worms. Yeah. But once we've opened it and dealt with it, we've healed it and we can move forward without that weight that we've carried mm -hmm. around for so long. Yeah. And it's important too to I, I emphasize this. I know there's a there are certain thought processes out there and certain individuals who have the that um belief system that you can you can rewire the brain the brain's plastic neuroplasticity you can rewire the brain to let go of of old memories the memories are always going to be there yeah. right it's, especially if they were branded into the brain by some some type of trauma the difference the rewiring the retraining of the brain comes from how you deal with it how you process it in your body in on a cellular level in your gut like that's what you have to and that's probably a lot of what you take your clients through that understanding you have to do that acknowledgement again right awareness of where that all stems from and then start to remove the sting of that so it's not still stinging you every single time yeah. it's brought up and a lot of people don't even realize as you said they're they don't even make that connection to how they're feeling today based on a memory from the past and how it's still in control yeah. of a lot of their day-to-day -day actions yeah and i find as well once once we've done the forgiveness and they've they've accepted forgiven and let go over time the memories fade the emotion from the memories is removed and the memories actually fade with it's rare that we ever forget right but that awful memory becomes a really distant memory it's no longer mm -hmm. vivid in the in the mind which is it's only got to be a good thing right yep yep very much so and you begin to notice the once you begin to identify the triggers you know what are the things that pull those memories up and it could be a sound it can be smell smells are horror you know incredibly powerful um, you know, once you're able to identify, oh, that's why I react this way when I smell this thing or when I see yeah. this thing or when I hear this thing, then you can start to disassociate. Well, that's this is a current sense, a current smell, a current, right? It's not that moment and being able to start cutting those ties from the current present to the past is also very very helpful. Now, what are some of the things? So let's say we have someone right now listening to this program or watching this video and they say, well, I want, I want to explore this. I want to start my own healing journey, but I'm not necessarily ready to call Sarah. Um, <laughs> what would you, how can they kind of take first steps in starting that? right now like as soon as they're done watching this like what's some of something that they can do so my advice is is you can't do it all at once as i said earlier so take baby steps uh, whether it's improve your lifestyle um you know cut out foods that are full of sugar full of trans fat start eating healthy uh whether that's start doing a bit more walking whether that's identifying what your stresses are and dealing with those situations. Can you look at it differently or can you change something about that situation? Um, identify your feelings as well, because a lot of us have dissociated from our body um, and we're not in tune with what's going on in our body, with what's going on in our mind. Um, and I've had clients who've had migraines and IBS and they say, I'm not stressed. But your body's telling you you're stressed. <laughs> so it's try and tie in with that um, feeling, that emotion, um, with the symptoms that you've got going on in your body. Um, any one of these um, is, is a great place to start. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but but baby steps. 
do it all slowly. Do a bit of meditation when you're out walking. Become mindful. Don't be on your phone. Don't be on your earbuds. Just listen to the sounds of nature. Um, you can you can meditate while you're walking. Just be in that moment. Bring yourself back to that moment. Stop thinking about what you're having for dinner or what's happening tomorrow. What's happening right here, right now? Because there is only this now minute. Of every minute of our life is only a now moment. The past has gone and the future hasn't yet arrived. And when it arrives, it will just be another moment in the now. So become really conscious and present of what's going on every moment of your life and step out of autopilot to become conscious of what it is that you're doing. Be really focused on, on the tasks or the walking or whatever it is you're doing. Be, be really focused on it and let go of all that extraneous thought. Mm, I love that. That's one of the things that one of the processes that I love is just that mindful meditation. And I tell people, if you can do that, even just a couple minutes every morning, and then a few minutes every night where you're doing some, some gratitude at night, right? Because the last thing you think about before you go to bed is what your brain's going to ruminate on while you're sleeping. Yeah. So having that positive, always looking at that positive, what are the positives I experienced today? But just doing those, they give you the ability to then in moments of stress, you've trained your brain so well if you're doing that on a daily basis, whether it's when you're out for a walk or whatever you do, then in those high stress moments, you have trained your brain to instantly be able to jump into present. Yeah. Because as you said, so much of the stress comes from the worry, you know, the 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 worrying about, oh, how did that go? How did I, you know, that thing that was said or that day that happened at work or the, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? Like so much of the stresses in our lives are based on that. But if you can instantly bring yourself into the now, you can calm that reactive fight, flight, freeze system in the brain. And it makes it very, it helps your brain. Yeah. And just take some deep breaths. You know, if you're feeling really uptight, anxious, angry, breathe deeply, really slowly and really deeply and just concentrate on the breathing. Be mindful. Follow the breath in through the nose and down through the throat and into the lungs and feel them expand and feel them contract and feel the breath come out. And just do that really, really, really slowly, as slow as you can. Um, it works a treat. It doesn't it? It's wonderful. So let's talk about some of the ways that the listeners can continue to work with you um, or continue to stay connected with you. So you have a podcast. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about the podcast. So my friend with gifts, shall we say, um, told me I'd write a book and it would be very successful when I was in that place of depression. And I am not a writer. So I'm like, well, I don't, I don't see that. I'm never going to write a book. I've got no plans to write a book. Anyway, I wrote a book and it's, it's doing well. It's, it's in four languages. Um, and last year she said, Sarah, you need to start a podcast. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, what even is a podcast? You know, I've got an idea of what it is. Um, and she said, it's, you need to keep getting your message out more to the world through a podcast. And um, funnily enough, my post this morning was all the eczema all over my arms on social media while I was thinking about doing that podcast because I had this massive amount of anxiety of working with the camera, especially mm -hmm. not so much with people, but more so on my own. So, um, so I became a guest on quite a few different people's podcasts to get some experience as what even a podcast is and what it looks like and how it works. And then I started my podcast in um, February this year. And, and I have interviewed several of the healers in my book, Heal Yourself. And a few of the people who wrote articles uh, for my course, Heal Yourself at Home. And we are just literally having a conversation like we are here about what they've done to heal themselves of conditions that doctors have said can't be healed. Um, so we talk about their journey through the healing process, just to share the message. And then alternate weeks, I just share snippets of health and healing information, um, just very short audio casts. Um, and my podcast is called Heal Yourself with Sarah Dawkins. 
and it's on all the major podcasting sites, Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music and Google Podcasts. Um, so anybody can tap into me there and find me free, totally free, sharing all the information from other people on what they've done and what they've healed and how they've healed. I love it. I love it. And as you were talking about your book, you can pick that up on Amazon. There's a link that we have in the show page uh, for those of you who are listening and not watching. For those of you who are watching, obviously, it's popping up there on the on the um, on the picture on the frame here. And you can also go to your your website is sdessentialhealth.com. So I'm assuming the SD is for Sarah Dawkins. It is. <laughs> okay. So that'll make it easy for people to remember. And if you want to reach out, you can reach out to Sarah via her email at Sarah at ESDessentialHealth.com. Sarah, it has been an absolutely wonderful time um, being able to have you as a guest on the show. Thank you so much for your wisdom and for sharing just the power of of being able to like the, the body's amazing. Give it the right tools, take away the bad stuff. And it's amazing what you can do. Absolutely. And, and thank you for having me, Julie. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. If you would like to stay connected with us at your best mind or with brain lady speaks, please follow us and give us a thumbs up. If this is a message that you you're like, Oh man, more people need to hear this. Then share the podcast, share this out to, to your sphere of influence. Give us a quick little positive review on one of wherever you listen to your podcast at, because that, you know, all this, you know, SEO and algorithm stuff of all the social media, every like, every share helps us to get this message out and helps it to be exposed to more and more people. If you have any questions for us at uh, Your Best Mind or Brain Lady Speaks, send us an email at info at brainladyspeaker.com and we will respond. If you have a topic you would like to see covered on the Brain Lady Speaks show, or you yourself have a message that you think would be a good fit for this program, then send us an uh, email at kelly at brainladyspeaker.com. She is our liaison for all things podcast. She does all of the wonderful uh, scheduling for us and setting up all this stuff on <laughs> uh, graphics and all of that. She's wonderful. So it's K-E-L-L-I at brainladyspeaker.com and send her a message. Uh, one more thing, I'm going to pop this up for all the different ways that you can stay in touch with Sarah. She's on Instagram. She is on Twitter. She is on LinkedIn. You can do the same with us at the Brain Lady Speaker. You can follow us on all of those. I'm at Brain Lady just about everywhere. So <laughs> just give us a follow, give us a like, and we would love to hear from you and have you share the content. Until next week, until we meet again, once again, thank you, Sarah, for being on the program. And everyone out there, take a nice deep breath in. Let it out. Go outside. Go enjoy the day. Simply enjoy every moment. <laughs>